reasons sometimes um, more doing our own thing and checking back in. Um, so it's just really, you know, uh, I, I think a nice moment for all of us to come together and talk about the work we've been doing, uh, where we are, where we want to go, and, and think collectively about the next key steps to move forward on. So just a kind of a little bit of an opening kickoff, I believe Jessica will go after me. I think she's, is hers, is hers record, well, we'll come to, we'll figure out the logistics. Yeah. Hers, maybe. Hers, is, hers is already in the cloud. Excellent. Good. Okay. So what I want to do is just give a just kind of reminder for all. I think most people know this. The goals of the workshop. It's in the agenda. Just talk about a few highlights of it, of accomplishments over the last few years. And of course, the coming talks will unpack a lot more of the things people are doing and the successes there. Um, reminding for for folks, some who know, some who maybe joined more recently, the funding history that has allowed Neatoma to grow over these years. And you'll see it's a really a, a successful mixture of different things. Um, then looking ahead to sort of the timeline for the spring and summer leading up to the geoinformatics proposal to go in, in in August, and then just a reminder of where we are this week. Let's see. Oh yeah, thank you. Um, yeah. So again, basic first and foremost, just sharing our. Whoops. Thank you. All right. Yeah, sharing our our updates and progress um, in these sort of three main areas: the work, the hard work we do on data stewardship and curation building these systems for sharing data and making it possible to others to, and ourselves to analyze it. And then this, this sort of theme of Thursday of using the data that we build for research, educational, and just generally broadening access to data purposes. Um, get really important is getting input on where we are and next priorities for the next stage as we, as we sort of start to move ahead to this August proposal. And then these sort of key topics that we want to talk about in more depth, taxonomy being, taxonomy being a long-standing one that is a, is a chief challenge for anything that's working in biodiversity space, um, and in particular some of the things we have to work with, work with morphotypes and, and so forth. Then uh, informatics and some of the either current developments or things underway or opportunities for what's happening next. And then again, there's sort of research and education. Um, and then again, laying the groundwork. Okay, the goals. All right, so just highlights first. So one is in the sort of area of, of data, database and data stewardship, just simple metrics of data volume. You can see a lower right there. We're now over 10.7 million individual observations, which is just amazing. Just this incredible growth and sustained growth. Um, over 31,000 individual data sets at 19,000 sites. And uh, you can see areas of the map that are very well filled in, areas that are sparser, but those of us who've been working with Neotoma know that all areas of that map have been filling in and there's been lots of work all over the world to bring more data in. In particular, there's been an effort in the pollen community bringing records from um, Africa, Latin America, Indo-Pacific. And so in, in that domain, there's been a lot of focused effort on the Southern Hemisphere. In addition, there's been new data types, um, dinoflagellates we'll have a talk about uh, later today, Heliofire, I see Elizabeth Dietz is on the call now starting to bring in the global charcoal and paleofire database, biomarkers as a data type, getting those variables defined, and Harley Franklin will talk about that later, and then ancient environmental DNA, and Trisha Spanbaum will be here to talk about that. Okay. Then, you know, we also, you know, what is Neotel by? Some of say it's a database, it's software services, it's a community. On the, on the software side, you know, Simon and Socorro and Jonathan Nelson and others, Steve Crawford, have been just continuing to always, you know, both patch the leaks, fix the bugs as things come up and re respond to requests of the moment. But then also on top of that, just doing sustained development effort and, and building out new capacity. And, you know, major milestone there led by Socorro and Simon is the Neotoma 2 R package now sent to CRAN for the kind of the public hosting. Uh, we have this really nice new website that was developed by a team at Penn State under the leadership of, of Jonathan Nelson. And we now have Brian Grimm now working on Tilia and so far modest, but he's been working on it now has his head wrapped around the Tilia you know, code base and is making, you know, starting to fix known issues. And the next step would be to start to enhance it and create new functionality and, or, you know, streamline capacity and some of the things that we'll talk about where, where the areas of need. Um, also, you know, things that are in motion and coming, you know, soon, soon being the next, you know, months to year time scale. We're in the, we've received supplemental funding from NSF to move um, uh, the whole system from the current server at Penn State, which is nearing end of life, to the cloud and moving using the cloud bank services at NSF. And then 
bulk uploader. This is something that's been a mainstay of this current proposal. We all know the one site at a time, Actilia has its advantages of careful curation, but its disadvantage of being kind of slow and inefficient if you work with lots of sites at once. And so Simon and, and, and Socorro, use, working with the LED 210, uh, Joe, Joy Hobbs, uh, Don Charles community, kind of as some test instances, working towards kind of bulk upload capacity of many records at once, doing this, but carefully to make sure we're curating it and, and not creating new problems through any sort of unsupervised uploads of, of data to Neotoma. Uh, next slide. And then, you know, to me, in some ways, always the most fundamentally, the most important thing about what Neotoma is, is us, right? People who have decided to work together to, to, you know, work on our, you know, gather our efforts, gather our data, start to create systems that we can then do bigger and better analyses. And so, you know, one of the things, there's lots of things like we sort of pointed to here, often community building is kind of diffuse, a conversation at a time kind of, kind of process. But some, some milestones to definitely, you know, celebrate is the relaunching of, of in-person workshops over the year. Again, uh, the Diatom community, community with Don Charles and Joy Hobbs and others leading the way with workshops at IAL, IPA, um, uh, Thomas Giesig and others have just recently completing a workshop at EPD. There is one uh, sponsored by INQA uh, for Indian palynologists. There was this meeting at AMQA that I was a part of. And again, part just to kind of connect it to where we are, what we're doing now, I really see this virtual workshop as a, as a key chance to as kind of cast as broad a net as possible to get input from as many people as possible about where we are and where we're going. Um, and so uh, that's always a challenge because we're a big group and there's lots of us doing different things, but this is as, as our really concerted effort to try to get that feedback about where we are. Next slide. Now to kind of connect this to you know what you know what keeps the lights on, and I really think one reason we've been a success story from NSF is that you know a sustained you know healthy but not you know you know we always could use more funding like a sustained amount of funding has let let us do kind of you know sustained effort and do good things, and so I think one of the things that's really remarkable is how long NSF has invested in this in this effort here, and I you can sort of see that top mainline funding which I sort of think is like the the bread and butter funding that lets us do kind of basic development. This has been funded first with pilot funding from the sedimentary geology and paleobiology program. And then since then, it's been NSF Geoinformatics, which funds kind of infrastructural capacity and not, you know, it's, it's seeking to advance science, but you don't necessarily have to have the, you know, the science paper at, at the end of it. You're trying to build capacity for the broader community, which is very much the spirit of Neotoma. I have highlighted some of the PIs there. And I'm not naming all names. There's, many of us are co-PIs in, in many of these proposals here. But just to kind of make another point too, that one you know, measure of sustainability is ongoing funding sustainability. One measure of sustainability is, is resilience to leadership change, right? And so we've already had one kind of generational change from Eric Grimm and Russ Graham being the initial leaders through the global pollen database and pond map efforts. And then I've stepped in as leaders, Jessica Blois and Simon Goring have stepped up in leadership roles. We have other people kind of moving up in different leadership roles in different ways. And so I just think one of our, you know, signs of sustainability and resilience is the willingness of people to step in and take, you know, find their place where they can lead and make something happen in a positive way. It could be at different scales of, of organization. Another thing that's been, I think, very successful for Neotoma is that this kind of framework of kind of a mainline funding stream and then this idea of open data and, and different groups kind of focusing on their areas is that it has allowed for different grants to come, you know, to people to kind of spin off this and create different projects in different areas. Some very closely tied to Neotoma, some more adjacent, but, you know, cross-supporting. So Kaba, for example, that Jessica Blois is liaised with, um, and, and Simon Haberly uh, will give a, a presentation live about this afternoon, you know, they're looking at, you know, Ameri uh, you know humans and climate and, and, and big animals on fire, you know, the, the whole history of, of Australia, one piece of which has been to bring data from the pollen um, Indo-Pacific into Neotoma. And so there's been this nice synergy in some companion areas. Thomas Kiesica has had, has had a focused data mobilization effort for the Netherlands and bringing in a bunch of pollen records for that area. There's been different grants from NSF led by Simon Goring for throughput, um, Brad Singer for a Geocon effort, Nick McKay, Andrew Vernal, Jessica Bloy. So each one kind of, and we don't have time to go through all the different grants here and their post site and so forth, but each one in some way has pursued some aim that has been complementary to Neotoma and Neotoma's partnered on it in some way that has either led to 
new data being added to Neotoma, new science being done, new software, you know, services capacity. So there's lots of ways for people. And part of part of the reason why I say this is that for all of us, if you think about the science we want to do, there are ways we might, you know, we can, you know, we can do that and leverage off of this common resource we've all been building. Okay, next slide. So for me, you know, the the, the big mission for me and and the Neotoma executive and the PIs is to just put in the next. Uh, geoinformatics proposal. And one key point there, you might say, well, how long is NSF going to keep funding us? And the answer is, of course, we don't know. And that's that's always an open question in this world. But one thing we have been told in times past is that we are still eligible for NSF for NSF geoinformatics facility level support, which is our kind of their mainline support level um, through 2029. So that's six more years. And so we have the, the capacity to go back um, to this program. And I think, again, with our demonstrated record of success, with ideas about where we're going next, we have every reason to think we'll be competitive. And of course, it's a competitive process. We have to see where we where we go. But that is kind of, again, what this, this workshop here is a gathering of ideas, a gathering of feedback that we then start to winnow into a coherent proposal by August of this year. Other, I, oops, actually, before we go on, sorry, one more thing. So a couple of things along the way. Jessica Blois is leading a workshop in mid-May for Pharos, and this is FAIR. You know, FAIR is the acronym for making data findable, accessible, interoperable, uh, reusable, and then open science. And Jessica is leading an effort um, of making paleo data, climate, ecological, archaeological data resources, both um, adhering to FAIR standards and then CARE standards, which relate to ethical and having indigenous and other uh, marginalized groups having access and some governance as, as appropriate of, the, of these relevant data sets. Um, so that's um, coming up uh, soon. We have, our, we have our annual report at the end of May. This, this workshop is also, will also be a starting lead into gathering information for that annual report. And then of course there's INQA and there'll be a workshop there. So these are some of the major kind of events happening from a project grant perspective and, and moving ahead over this next several months. Okay, so then coming back to today, you know, just kind of reminding ourselves where we are today is really focusing on, on what I think is the foundation of it all, the data stewards doing the careful work to bring data in and making sure it meets our kind of community data standards. So it's therefore reusable by as many people as possible. We all know how bad data or incompletely documented data becomes a very quickly unusable data. And so this is, this, this is sort of the foundation for everything. Um, so that's today's first, and then we'll talk more about taxonomy as a particular topic of concern, and then we'll move on to these other topics for Wednesday and Thursday. And then we'll kind of close with the synthesis just in the morning session on Friday. So again, to simply restate kind of where I hope we'll, we'll be doing is where are we now, um, where do we want to go, and what do we need to get there? What are, what are our, our key needs of going forward? Okay, um, I think that's it for what I wanted to share show and share. And with that, I know this is kind of like this today is kind of like presentation, presentation, presentation. We probably don't have time for questions, but feel free to use the chat window and or Slack. We have this Neotoma all hands Slack space. If people want to have a bit of a side dialogue about anything I brought up here, ideas that were sparked, feel free to use that those forums as a way to um, capture any, any thoughts you might have along the way. Also, I'll add to is that we have a notes page. Um, in which um, Simon and I will kind of tag team and on uh, taking notes um, and, and others are welcome to as well. And so um, as we hand off from me now to, to the presentation by Jessica, I'll move into more note taking mode and I'll post a copy of the, of the, um, the, the notes page to this chat window so people can, can follow that too. Okay. <laughs>